Welcome back to Woodcraft 716. I'm Mike and today I'm going to show you how to build this rustic farmhouse style sofa table. Real quick before we get started I just wanted to let everybody know that this is not my pattern. It's from uh, Matt at 731 Woodworks and uh, it's based on his uh, design. Um, measurements are different to fit my customers needs but uh, this pattern and uh, some of the techniques I used during this build came from Matt at 731 Woodworks and if you want to check out some awesome videos he builds some really awesome stuff uh, he always talks about Jay Bates getting him into uh, woodworking and I'm gonna say that Matt has got me into this uh, YouTube uh, videos <laughs> uh, I've been woodworking for about 20 years and uh, Matt has inspired me to take the plunge so uh, check out his videos he's got a ton of them in high quality content Matt 731 woodworks also when I use the level to uh, joint uh, the 2x4s in the build process uh, that tip came from Matt at 731 woodworks so thanks to him and uh, hope you guys enjoy this video another thing I wanted to mention real quick was that if you use your circular saw to cut off your 2x4s you'll have these rounded edges which is fine just remember that when you go from the end you cut with your saw to the round over edge you'll need to round over the sharp edge to make it look good the first thing we're going to do is cut the legs down to 34 and a half our table is going to be 36 inches so by the time we take off our inch and a half for the top, uh, we're looking at 34 and a half. With the legs cut, now we're going to cut the inside end pieces. We're going to need six of them at seven inches. So I'm just using the leftover piece from the legs to get two legs and about two feet left out of the eight foot piece. Uh, so I have two of those left. I get three out of each one. How we get our seven inch pieces out of that. The next thing we're going to need are the side rails and they're 39 inches. Uh, we need six of them, but we're going to cut them in half and make them, you know, one and a half by one and a half. So we are going to uh, only need three pieces. Now that they're all done, we're going to cut the top, uh, which is 48 inches, and it's only 12 inches wide. So I have an eight footer, which is about eight foot and half an inch. So I'm just going to split the difference and then trim off the ends. Okay, now that all our wood is cut, we're going to uh, join them on the table saw using a level. Uh, we're just going to uh, cut about a quarter inch off of each side so that we can get down to our three inches. So I'll take about a quarter inch off, get rid of the level, use the fence and get it down to uh, three inches. Okay, now those are all done. We'll just switch over to uh, lose the level and trim these up to three inches and the tops to six inches since our little table is 12 inches wide. And that's it for the uh, legs and the tabletop. The next thing we're gonna do is rip these front shelf brackets uh, down to an inch and a half so we set the fence at an inch and a half and we're going to get two out of each board and we'll do the same to the other two we'll need six total uh, I had three 2x4s and now we'll end up with six. 
now we have our tabletop, two pieces, our legs, four pieces, our side stretchers, six pieces, and six pieces for the end stretchers. Uh, next thing we're going to do, I think, is uh, start the pocket holes. Now we're going to put some pocket holes in them. I'm going to do one side of the top since it's real narrow, it's only 12 inches wide. I'll put pocket holes in the top and the stretcher rails. We'll do that set up for an uh, inch and a half on my Craig pocket hole jig. I think this is the K4. Uh, K5 seems like it's a little bit better, but I can't seem to can't see myself spending the money for something that uh, I basically already have. It's just got a uh, lever in the front instead of the back. Okay, so now we're gonna put our pocket holes in the um, running rails uh, for the uh, front and back. I'm just looking for the best side so that uh, we can put the pocket holes where they're best suited. So I marked off the legs. We're gonna uh, drill some holes and fill them with uh, a plug when we're done after we screw in the sides because the sides are so narrow. Uh, normally I would pocket hole those if I was doing a table or uh, a coffee bar or uh, some kind of stand. Um, but because this is so narrow, it's what the customer wants. Uh, I'm gonna have to drill some countersink holes and then um, plug them and uh, it'll be just fine. Okay, so I have the drill press set up with a half inch bit and we'll use a half inch dowel to plug the holes. I have the uh, depth set <clears throat> so that we don't go too far. And then we'll uh, drill them out as we go. Now that our pocket holes are done, our countersinks are done, we're going to glue up the top and put in our pocket holes, get the top ready for uh, sanding, let that, glue, why, let that glue dry while we put the rest of this together. I'm just using Type On 3, I uh, put it on pretty liberally. Uh, the Type On 3 seems to uh, hold a little bit better and gives you a little more uh, working time. I'm just using two and a half inch pocket hole screws and uh, we're just going to zip these in. Okay here we have our leg assembly with the end spacers. <clears throat> Normally I would put pocket holes in these but because the customer wanted a 12 inch uh, wide sofa table uh, after we take an inch off for the overhang and the three inches for inch and a half and inch and a half for the legs that only leaves us with seven inches uh, there's no way I could drill a pocket I could drill the pocket hole I wouldn't be able to attach it together uh, the bits would be too long and I couldn't get my drill in there so we countersunk the ends uh, we're going to glue pre-drill clamp and uh, assemble the two leg sections. So legs are complete. I think the next thing we'll do is attach the side rails. We're gonna put the front stretchers in, uh, glue, clamp, and screw the pocket holes together. Um, starting with the front, which is face down, I'm leaving the top off. I'm going to do the two, the bottom and the middle front rail, and then we'll square it up and put on the other ones. Now we're going to put the top rails on, and we're we flipped it over so that the uh, pocket holes will be on top. The top is on or the top rails are on if you notice I didn't put the center rail in the back um, that's because we're going to have an 
X style brace, which is the leftover from the shelves to make that X brace. Now I've cut this down to a uh, little over three quarter. That only allows me one pocket hole, but it's just the backing for the middle shelf and it's going to have that X style over the back. Uh, we're done with the frame other than plugging the holes. So I think we'll get into that right now. Okay, now that that's done, we'll uh, let the glue dry and cut them off. Uh, plugs are in and sanded. I'll do the other side. Uh, I won't bore you with videotaping that. Okay, now our frame's all built, our plugs are all filled and cut off flush. We got to add the shelves, and I bought these uh, spruce pine fir glued edge planks at Home Depot. I think they're about 15 bucks a piece. I, if I had realized how small it was going to be, I could have just used a piece of one by, but I did buy these glued up edges pieces, and I will cut them down to size, and uh, I'll cut them a little big so that uh, we can nibble off until, until it fits in there good. Now we're going to take them over to the miter saw and get them to the correct length. Okay, now all we got to do is uh, glue it. So we have our table uh, X braces put on the back. I have the shelves just sitting in there. We still have to pocket hole them and put them on uh, and the top just sitting on there. But just wanted to give you an idea of what it's going to look like when it's all done. After we drill the pocket holes for the shelves, our next step will be sanding. Now we're going to uh, drill our pocket holes in the bottom of the shelves. Now we're going to uh, router, we're going to put an eighth inch round over on uh, the top of just the tabletop. I'm going to be using my bench cookies that I made in a previous video. If you want to check that out, uh, I'll put a card at the end of this um, video. And they're just some rubber stoppers that you put down and they hold your material real good while you're uh, routing or sanding. So we'll be using these a lot. Just going to put my round over around both sides of the top. Okay, that's it. Uh, next thing we'll be doing is sanding the tabletop flat, the plugs flat. We'll be sanding all, all our shelves. <laughs> we'll be sanding everything. So we'll be sanding for quite a while. Hit this with the belt sander. This is the top. We're just going to take off the uh, edge and uh, flip it over and do the other side. Nice and smooth. But that's the only one we're going to use the belt sander on. I think everything else we can hit with uh, 80 grit on the orbital. All done with the sanding. Uh, both sides are level. I think this is the only portion of the table that we're going to use the um, belt sander on. We're going to move to the random orbital sander with uh, 80 grit. Now we got our 80 grit on here and we're going to sand everything. We're going to sand the table, the top, and the two shelves. Okay, that is it for sanding. Uh, up to 120. Uh, this is a rustic table, so I, I can't see going any uh, higher than that. So, okay, now we're ready for our staining process. So, what we want to use is a 
pre-stain conditioner, uh, especially on pine. Uh, this is Minwax, uh, thanks to Matt from 731 Woodworks. He recommends this stuff and it works awesome. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and just put a coat on real quick and then we'll uh, wipe it down in about, about a half an hour. So this is all set. Uh, we're gonna let this sit for about a half an hour. Uh, I only put it on the tops because uh, you're not going to see the bottom, so uh, no sense wasting it. We'll save this for you know more projects. So we'll wipe it off in about a half an hour. It's soaking up pretty good, so I'm not sure we're going to need to wipe off much, but uh, we'll wipe it down, make sure it's uh, dust-free, and uh, apply the stain. Okay, so these are all stained up and uh, tomorrow we'll flip them over and put a coat on the other side. Okay, we're outside the wood shop. It's January 2nd, so it's kind of cold out here uh, in western New York. Uh, we're going to put a dark walnut stain on this, and uh, or it's a dark walnut paint. And uh, it's Rust-Oleum, and we're just going to use this for the base coat. So we're going to cover the whole thing. All right, that's it. Uh, it's all painted brown, and uh, we'll check back after it dries. Check off, flip it over, and just hit the two bottom rails. I think I got everything else. Once that dry, we'll be ready to put the uh, white finish on it. So now that our spray paint's drying, we're gonna move on to uh, putting our polyacrylic on the. Uh, it's just a mid wax polyacrylic. We're gonna put that on the uh, top and the two shelves and uh, while the spray paint's drying outside. So now that we got our first coat on the bottoms, uh, I'll probably put one more coat on the bottom, flip them over, do the tops, uh, probably three coats on the top. We're gonna sand in between layers just with a super fine sandpaper, 220, or, or sorry 2000 uh, we'll just go a little bit higher and just take off the edge from the polyacrylic it's water cleanup and uh, dries in about 40 minutes so we're back outside where we're just gonna put our top coat of white on our table just putting our second coat on the top I didn't uh, film the second coat on the bottom um, just didn't see it necessary so this polyacrylic goes on kind of like a milky color but uh, it dries real nice and uh, we're gonna put a coat of wax on it anyways okay you can see the top is done uh, three coats of the polyacrylic came out nice it's all dry overnight uh, the stand is all done. Uh, it does need to be uh, distressed to match the customer's other furniture. So for the top, we're just going to put some uh, Johnson's Pace Wax on there uh, with some 4 out steel wool. Alright, we're going to do the same thing to the uh, tops of the shelves. We put it on the top and the two shelves. Uh, I didn't do the sides of the shelves because they're going to be inset and I'm not going to do the bottom of the shelves because it's just the bottom. I will do a couple inches under the edges of the top, you know, where people feel maybe under the counter to go to move it, something like that. Uh, it'll be nice and smooth. Other than that, uh, we're going to put about three coats on this and it'll be done. Now it's all done. Uh, drying we're just going to wipe off the excess and put another coat on uh, it really makes it feel smooth uh, when it's all cleaned up and that's looking good and uh, as you can see I did stain the, the bottom but uh, we're not going to wax it so the tops done the shelves are done 
I just finished wiping off the third coat. This is really smooth. Next thing we're going to do is de-stress the, the table itself to match the customer's other uh, furniture. A little bit less than you normally would because as we uh, put a wax on it with the steel wool, that will take off a little more paint as well. That'll really bring out some of these uh, not, <clears throat> not so dark spots, but they will get darker. We'll put a coat of wax on this, assemble this, and uh, this one will be done. Uh, distressed it or sanded it. Uh, we're going to put our paste wax on and it's going to give this a silky smooth finish. It's really going to be nice. So we got our wax on this sucker. It is smooth. Put the top on and the shelves and uh, that's it. We'll call it a day and this, this thing will be done. Got it flipped over with the top on here. I normally use these Rockler tabletop fasteners. Um, it's kind of like a little Z clip with a hole in one end. And what you would do is router out a little groove in here and slide this into the groove and screw it down. Um, the problem is I can't fit my router in this small area. So I'm going to have to screw this down. And the reason to use the tabletop fasteners is so that the top can expand and contract with some you know moisture and humidity and hopefully uh, by screwing this down I the wood won't split over time and uh, if it does you know I will uh, replace it for the lady because uh, she's been a good customer so I'm not gluing it down but I am going to put uh, six screws in countersunk um, just to hold the top on so the table's flipped over. To add the shelves, we're going to have to, I just put some clamps on here to uh, keep it flush with what will be the top because the table's upside down. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and put our pocket hole screws in. All right, we're all done. Uh, I really think it looks good with that paste wax on there so smooth um, the shelves line up good um, just got that furniture grade finish on it and uh, I'm really happy with this I, I hope the customer will be happy with this too uh, don't forget to check the cards at the end of this video for the uh, bench cookies and tools to get started if you got any value out of this video please like subscribe and share with all your friends on social media it really helps these small channels go a long way and thanks for watching.